the pre-med year, session number 330. Hello, and welcome to The Pre-Med Years, where we believe that collaboration, not competition, is key to your success. I'm your host, Dr. Ryan Gray, and in this podcast, we share with you stories, encouragement, and information that you need to know to help guide you on your path to becoming a physician. Welcome to The Pre-Med Years. Thank you for taking your time to join me today. This week, I have a great guest, someone who is a non-traditional student who had a family early on, had a family taking prereqs, had a family to support and needed to work, and so took his prereqs at a community college. And we talk a lot about the pushback that he got on the interview trail from the interviewers about community college and what that meant for him and his future in medical school. Obviously, he is successful at this point, and so it didn't hold him back too much. Hopefully, if you are in this process, and you are taking classes at community college, this interview will give you some good encouragement that it is okay to take classes at a community college. David, welcome to the pre-med years. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. When did you first realize that you wanted to be a doctor? I mean, I feel like a lot of people, I had this like weird obsession with being a doctor from a young age. I had no reason to. It was just kind of my default answer. That was all through like elementary school, middle school, and high school. And everyone, anyone would ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up after I said NBA player. Uh, and they would kind of laugh at me. <laughs> uh, I would just talk about, you know, how much I liked math and science. And so I was like, I guess I'll be a doctor or something. But I had no idea what that meant. I had no idea what the whole path to becoming a physician entailed. Mm-hmm. And really, it wasn't until I was in undergrad that that's kind of what I settled on I wanted to do. I wanted to be a physician. And, uh, you know, life kind of happened and it took me a, a couple of years to get back on, on track after I decided that's what I wanted to do. But, uh, but I did it. So what do you mean you, when you say you settled on being a physician, what, what was that kind of journey for you to figure that out? I had a lot of self doubt in undergrad. There was a lot of pressure I, f- I felt to pick a, a, a career that was going to provide for, for me and my family and a lot of pressure to figure something out quickly. I always joke with, uh, with my wife that uh, as soon as we started dating and I would go over to her parents' house, that the question I'd always get asked is, well, what are you going to be? What are you going to be? <laughs> and, uh, and I never really had a good answer. I was always kind of waffling back and forth. And I never really liked school all that much. I liked learning, but I never really liked school. And so I, I wasn't sure. I liked the idea of becoming a physician. I liked the, I was really set on, on wanting to do that and help people, but I didn't, I wasn't sure I was able to get through all the schooling. Like, I don't know if I can do that. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of, I waffled back and forth and I didn't really know that I could do it. I didn't believe in myself. And so once I finally decided that that was something that I could do and that I wanted to do, it was already after my wife was in her her graduate program. And so that was, we had to wait until she finished that. And then it was, uh, it was my turn to pursue my, my dream, I guess. When you say you had self doubt, was there evidence that backed that up to say, Hey, like I'm not a very good student or was it just all internal? I wasn't, I didn't have the best grades uh, in high school or in undergrad, but that was more a function of, I didn't really try my hardest. I never really studied. I didn't, really put my full effort into it. Also in, in undergrad, I was working full time the entire time I was in it. And so it was school kind of came second for me. It wasn't a super, it wasn't at the top of my priority list, I guess we can say. Why were you so busy with other stuff outside of school? So I got married in my sophomore year of undergrad. Uh, and we had our first daughter a year after that. So my junior year, and so I would go to work in the mornings. I worked a standard like eight to five job. I'd go to work from eight to five and then I'd run over to the school at like 530, take my classes at night and then go home and, and help take care of the kid that we had at the time, our one, our first daughter and, you know, hang out with my wife and try to not, not neglect that relationship. <laughs> so there was a, there was a lot of, a lot of balls to juggle 
a lot of balls in the air. And uh, so I, I just didn't really give it my full, my full effort. Mm -hmm. What was it that after being done with school and going and getting a job, what was it that, that you think ultimately led you back to, to go down the pre-med path again? Sure. It was actually, I had worked at this company for about five years and I kind of worked my way up into a, into a developer job, a software development job. And uh, I went to lunch with these guys and we were all sitting around and we were talking about, you know, if we weren't doing software, what's the one thing we would do? And, you know, I, I, I hated this conversation because I always kind of wanted to do medicine, but I was afraid to do it because of the work and the, the time commitment and the, and the debt and all that stuff. So I kind of just like begrudgingly was like, ah, you know, I think I'd be a, I'd be a doctor. And everyone was like, well, wh why would you say that? So I, I kind of shared my reasons for wanting to do that. And they said, well, why, why don't you just go do that? You know, I was like, well, that's, <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> I know it's, it's what, what do you mean? I just go do that. It's not like you just go sign up for medical school and, and do it. And they were, and they were super supportive of me. These guys were saying, you know, Hey, you know, if this is your, if this is your dream, why don't you pursue it? And so that kind of planted the seed in my head and I went home and talked to my wife and I told her, I said, Hey, you know, this is coming up again in my mind. I feel like this is something I, I really want to pursue and let me just look into it and, uh, and see what it would take for me to get to there, to get to that point. Uh, and she's, my wife is just amazing. I can't say enough about her and how much she's helped me in this journey. And she was all for it. She said, you know what, if this is your dream, this is, uh, this is something you need to do, go for it. So that kind of set me on the path towards, towards where I am today. So it sounds like you needed that external validation from somebody and it, it came from your coworkers to initially get you kind of going in this direction. Yeah. I mean, I had kind of resigned to the fact that, you know, Hey, I, I had my undergraduate degree by that point and I was working in this job doing software and I enjoyed it. And I kind of resigned myself to the fact, you know, it's just something I don't hate not something I'm amazingly <laughs> passionate about. It's something I don't hate and I, I could be happy doing this. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Um, it pays it the bills, supports the yeah, family. Absolutely. It was, it was something to do. And I was good at it and uh, it paid, paid well. And, you know, I, like I said, I didn't hate it. So I'd kind of accepted that this would be an okay end to my life to just go down this path. But that little kick, that, that, that seed that got planted in my mind was really what, what pushed me over the edge. A lot of people will get that seed, they'll, they'll get that itch, but they won't take action on it because of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And, and because you're making money, you're supporting the family, and going away from that would be an issue. What, what do you think allowed you to take that leap and, and actually start down the path? That's a great question. I think I have... I, my wife would laugh if she heard this. I'm, I'm an incredibly stubborn person. Once I set my mind on something and I finally decide to do it, it's really hard to get me off of that track. And uh, once I set my mind and, and, you know, we had talked about it and she said, yeah, I'd pursue it. And I kind of decided that, you know, hey, I'll, I'll take this. I'll follow this through. It was kind of, kind of like an inevitable at that point. There wasn't really much that could have pushed me off that path. Yeah. I don't know. I just have this, I have this desire to, to accomplish what my goals are. This was another goal that I had. When you said you, you talked to your wife, you're like, let me look into this. Let me figure out what I need to do. At this point, you're a couple of years out of school or a few years out of school. And you probably don't have the, the resources of a, of a pre-health office to go to. How did you start gathering that information that you could rely on and, and figure out what to do? So I, I, I trusted the internet and I went online <laughs> and I started looking at, you know, what are the prerequisite courses I need to take? What does taking the MCAT and studying for the MCAT look like? You know, how long do people typically take to apply to medical school, all that kind of stuff. And I really just kind of, you know, I, I say that I really want to accomplish my goal and follow through on things, but I also was cognizant of the fact that it's an expensive process after, after I was looking into it. I didn't want to just throw a bunch of money away. And so I kind of wanted to just dip my toes in the water a little bit at the outset of it. And so really what I just did is I signed up for a few classes, signed up for classes at our local community college in town. 
it was a general chemistry class that I had taken in undergrad, like this was 2015 and I had taken that class in 2004. So 11 years before, and I got a C in that class. So I just said, Hey, you know, let me just retake this class. If I can make an A in the class, that'll, you know, kick me to the next step. And then if I keep going and it, I keep finding success, then I'll just keep, I'll keep pursuing this goal. So you just set up little trip wires for yourself. As long as I keep tripping these wires, I'm, I'm going to keep going. Yeah, that was, that was pretty much it. And my wife and I kind of agreed that as long as I kept meeting these goals and moving forward, that we would go all in on it. And uh, yeah, and I just met, uh, met every one of those little checkpoints along the way and uh, it all worked out for the best. So there was never a, a checkpoint where you're, you, you failed and you're like, but I still want to <laughs> do this. Well, there, so funny you say that. So I... <laughs> I was totally unrealistic about this. And anyone listening to this, do not try to do this. So I took that first chemistry class and I said, okay, you know, I did well in the class. And I was like, all right, I don't want to invest a couple of years and a bunch of money into this. So I'm just going to try to take the MCAT right now <laughs> and see how I do. That was my, I, that, I, I don't know how Let's I got see. this in my head. We'll just, yeah. you know, if I do well on it, then that's a sign that I should keep going forward. It was so dumb. <laughs> And so I started studying for the MCAT after I took that first chemistry course. I took a, a practice exam, a full-length practice exam. I got a score, and I was like, eh, it was, it, was, it was not that great. And then this was right around the time they started doing the, uh, the new MCAT, right? This is 2015. Mm -hmm. And I started reading the reactions of people online who had taken it. And their reaction was just like, what the heck was that? I, I wasn't expecting this. There was so much biochem on there. And, People were freaking out. And so I was kind of like, oh, okay, I should probably slow down, <laughs> take this a step at a time, finish some more prereq courses before I take the MCAT. So that was kind of a little bit of a setback I'm in, in my mind at the time. Looking back, that was a definite like blessing that I, I saw people reacting to it that strongly. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting you say that, though, because I've talked to students recently who are trying to shortcut the system and do that. Right. Somebody who, who has a different degree and they're like, I'm just going to take the MCAT and apply to schools that don't have prereqs. And so I don't have to go back to school and take all the prereqs. I'll just self-study all of the content and, and I'm a good test taker. I'll, I'll do okay. Yeah. I, I can't discourage that enough. Like just take the, <laughs> there's a reason that the process is set up the way that it is and it stinks and it takes a lot of time and it's a lot of money. But if you follow it the way that it's supposed to be set out, there's a better chance that you're going to be successful than if you just wing it. And, and I kind of, this was another theme that my wife and I had discussed in my undergrad education and in, in my life in general, I'd kind of been the person that just wings things. I don't uh, necessarily follow the, the beaten path. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, hey, I want, to, I want to be a software engineer. Okay, I'm going to go do that. I have no formal education in software, but I can teach myself that and I can figure it out and I can work my way up to positions, you know, or, Hey, you know, I'm going to, I want to get an undergraduate degree, but I don't really know what it is that I want to study. So I'm going to change degrees a bunch and I'm just going to settle on the weirdest undergraduate degree that's ever been conceived of, which is general <laughs> studies. Right. It's, I, I promise it's an actual degree. And so for this, I really wanted to, at that point, uh, once I realized that I should probably slow down, I said, you know, I'm going to actually do this thing by the books. I'm going to follow the process, the way that it's supposed to be done for once in my life and do things the way that they're, they're supposed to be done. And I'm so glad that I did. Let's talk about it from the other side. Now that you're in medical school, having taken the prereqs, having gone through that process of learning the sciences in a structured way and not just for the MCAT, do you, do you think that's helped in that way as well and not just getting into medical school? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I would be so lost those first few months if I had not done my undergraduate course or the post back course that I had done courses that I had done. I mean, the whole drinking from the fire hose or the pancakes or whatever you want to, <laughs> whatever analogy you want to throw out there. I mean, it is so true. And it's something you can't appreciate until you're here. Mm -hmm. You just, there's no words. There's no way to convey it. The best you can do is just check your ego at the door and listen to the people who have been there before you who say, learn all the things that you need to learn in undergrad Take the prereqs, try as best you can, because that information that you learn, it's going to come back. And the better you can learn it in undergrad, the easier time you're going to have in the first year of medical school. 
Yeah. When you went back and you did your post back classes, you made the decision to continue to work, if not full time, a lot of time, and then take your post back classes at the community college. Why did you make that decision to continue to work and not go back to a university full time or part time to 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 do more uh, of those coursework there? Uh, well, I mean, the the main reason was uh, you know I had I had to. Uh, one child at the time and another one on the way. Uh, and we, you know, I didn't want to disrupt my family. I wanted to disrupt my family as little as possible throughout this whole, whole process. And the easiest way to do that was to take courses at the community college. Uh, they had classes in the evening, which fit my work schedule. Uh, they had classes that were cheaper than, than the, the university that was nearby. Uh, those classes, they were, I think they only offered them at like noon or one o'clock or something like that. Uh, that was like the latest they offered them. And mm. there was no way I could have made that work with my work schedule. And it would have been about like four times as expensive, four or five times as expensive per semester uh, to take them at the university. So I kind of did the mental calculus. I looked through the MSAR and saw how many schools uh, accepted or didn't accept or kind of like on a case by case basis accepted community college credits. And I, I kind of just bit the bullet and said, you know, I'll, I'll suffer a, uh, a smaller selection of schools that I can apply to for that security blanket for my family and that ability to provide for them and not change their standard of living while I go through this process. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest thing about having a family and working full time and trying to do all of your prereqs at the same time? Just keeping all the balls in the air and try not to trying to drop as few as possible. It, it's incredibly time consuming, as anybody who's going through that same that same scenario knows. Uh, you know, you get home, you leave straight from work, and you go to your classes. You're in class until seven, eight o'clock at night. You run home. Hopefully, your kids are still awake. You can say good night to them. Eat dinner. You study. Go to bed. Get up in the morning. Rinse and repeat. It's just it's it's really hard from a logistical perspective, and it's also just a a mental fatigue perspective. How do you fit in all the other things that you're supposedly supposed to be doing, like shadowing and clinical experience and volunteering and all of that saving sure. the world stuff? Yeah, uh, that was all the weekend. Also, I would take a couple of half days and go shadow in the morning. I had a, a physician locally that I was shadowing for a while, and I would just go hang out with him like a Friday morning take a half day off of work to do that. And then I would volunteer. I found a, a hospital nearby that had Saturday and Sunday volunteer positions. And that took a while to find that spot, but uh, I was able to find that. And so every week I'd go down there and do a couple hours and, and get that stuff in. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the the pushback that you got with, with your applications, with interviewing specifically. Sure. You had several interviews and it seems like you continually posted in the hangout that like beware i did my prereqs at a community college and it came up every single time what was that like to prove yourself with your classes but be continually doubted in the interview process yeah so that would that totally caught me off guard you know i was all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed going on my first interview i was really excited walked into the interview room and I sit down with a, a PhD and a, and a physician. And the first thing they say, they look at me and they look at my, my application. They say, you've got, a, you've got a pretty good application here, but why did you have to go and do the community college stuff? Like, why did you have to ruin your application by doing that? <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, all right. Well, I guess we're going right here. And so I, you know, I tried to give them the reasons why I did that. And I'll never forget the, the PhD that was sitting there. She looks at me, she puts down her glasses and she says, you're not telling me why you should be considered for medical school. You haven't shown me why you're ready to come to medical school here. And I was just like, wow, I, I'm not sure what to tell you. Uh, you know, I, I went through the whole thing and you know, I did well in the classes. I did well in the MCAT. I thought that would, you know, and then she just wouldn't, she wouldn't buy it. And, uh, I, I to this day I'm not sure if she was trying to do like a stress interview kind mm -hmm. of thing or what, but she was she was dogged on the on the fact that I had taken these courses at, at the community college. And yet you were there for the interview, 
right? right? So, so somebody in the admissions office said, yeah, let's, let's invite David for an interview. I see that he went to community college, but that's okay. Yeah. And, and I got an acceptance like two weeks later. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, and this is what I tell people all the time and, and anybody that's in the hangout is going to know my little diet drive on community colleges. Like you can absolutely get into medical school if you take coursework at a community college. If you do your entire post back at the community college, I think I have like 170 hours of undergraduate coursework under my belt. And I, I want to say 80 to 90 of those are at a community college. I did my first two full years of undergrad at a community college. I did my entire post back at a community college, and I, I was able to make it. But you will probably get some pushback. We'll definitely have your school list affected by which ones will and will not accept community college credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't let that deter you. Like You can absolutely get into medical school if you take your coursework there. What else surprised you? along the application process that you were like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. I think a big part of it was how much waiting there is. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's just a lot of, like, you rush to submit your application as fast as you can, or at least you should, right? (laughs) Submit your applications early. You rush to submit your applications, and then you kind of just hurry up and wait. You may or may not get interviews early on. uh, And so if you do, you really lucky and do those interviews and then there's just a bunch of more waiting and waiting and waiting for more more interviews if any will come and the whole while you're just like oh well you know what do i do now there's a lot of downtime i was expecting it to be a lot more fast-paced and busy what was the the hardest thing about the the actual application process like the essays and filling out all the activities and secondaries and stuff like that I think talking about myself, I hate talking about myself. I would rather do pretty much anything. <laughs> Writing this essay you know, about myself, the personal statement, and then filling out secondaries, talking about, you know, tell us what's great about you and tell us all the amazing things that you're doing. And then going on interviews and they ask you, you know, tell us about yourself. I hate that question. <laughs> and, you know, tell us why we should accept you to this medical school and all this stuff like that was so hard for me that's just not my personality Mm -hmm. rather talk about you and and your situation or i'd rather talk about other people hypotheticals and ethical questions yeah getting comfortable talking about myself was was really hard yeah what do you think led to being successful multiple times over with different medical schools accepting you Honestly, I think it, a lot of it was the practice. Uh, I did a lot of interview prep with you. And uh, those interviews, when I would come, I, I felt very comfortable walking into pretty much any, every interview I did. Because I had been there, I had a- answered the questions, I had rehearsed the types of things I wanted to say and the types of the way that I wanted to speak. Not the exact things that I wanted to say, but the message that I wanted to get across. And having that practice under your belt is so key. Like you don't want to go into a game and practice and without practicing the plays that you're going to execute, right? Mm-hmm. Same way it is in sports. You want to practice before game day so that when you're going in there, you have an idea of what to expect. You have an idea of the way to approach things. Yeah, that that was so huge. Yeah, even the the MCAT for the the non sports people out there, it's I always give the analogy of the MCAT. You you don't. Most people don't take the MCAT without sitting down for a practice test. So, so why wouldn't you do the same thing for an interview? Absolutely. Huge. Yeah. For you, you were accepted to, I think, multiple DO schools and an MD school. What was the decision like for you to choose the school that you ended up at? So, yeah, I was, I was very fortunate. I had a number of acceptances to choose from. There was a lot of considerations for me not the least of which was like how close my family was the school where i ended up i have i have my parents who spend a lot of their time in the state and uh my brother and his family who are also in the state that was a huge one having a support network there for me and my family i also wanted to go to a school where they really showed me that they cared about their students they didn't do the whole lip service thing and that was one thing that I really looked for when I went out on interviews. A lot of schools will talk about student wellness, or they'll talk about all the things they do for their students, but they never really showed you a lot of like the fruits of 
of what they had done or what they do for their students. When I came here and interviewed at Wake, they just, they were so forward about here are the things, like the actual things we do. And the students talked about concrete things the school does for them. And they talked about all the, the programs that they have and the ability for them, the school to give them what they call wellness grants, which are, uh, they give money to students for purposes of making their lives better, making the lives of the students easier. And so we can survive this ridiculous first two years of medical school. Hmm. Uh, and it was just like, that, that was really what surprised me when I came here, how much they had to show me and the tangibles that they were able to produce. What was that transition like for you to move to a new state, uproot your family, and then start medical school, which is unlike anything you've ever experienced before? <laughs> oh, man, I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't underestimate the whole process. It was, it was a beast. So I came out here, and I had, I had kind of an idea of what to expect, but actually going through it is a, is a whole other animal. I severely underestimated how much work and time it would require to do the whole family thing along with school and try to keep up with all the social stuff that's happening down at school and everything. But again, this just goes to speak to what an amazing support system I have with my wife and my family. They've, they've kind of all rallied around me and they've sacrificed so much so that I can pursue this crazy dream. And I really wouldn't be here, wouldn't be able to do this without their help. What does your schedule look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Day-to-day -day basis, I typically try to get going in the mornings uh, around 8 a.m. I'll go down to school to study. It's, it's really hard for me to study here at the house. We have two dogs, got two kids. I mean, they're off at school and, and my wife works, so the house would be empty. But I just like to get out and to be in a different environment. It's more conducive to studying. So I'll go down to school and I'll be there basically from 8 o'clock until 5 or 6 at night. Then I'll come home, have dinner with the family, try to. And then I'll pretty much go back and kind of recluse myself and study again till, till I'm ready to go to bed, 10 or 11 o'clock. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. How, as a father, as a husband, what is that communication like with the family about the amount of time and effort that you have to put into this, which sacrifices the time that you have with them? That's definitely a huge challenge that, that we have. We like to talk in the pre-med world about how much of a selfless thing it is to become a physician and you give your life to serving others and to helping other people. And, and that is true. I don't want to, I don't want to belittle that, but the uh, medical training is very selfish. You cannot go through medical training and postpone things you can't move dates around it's there's this schedule you have to follow it within a reason of course if there's an emergency things will come up but the people in your life have to bend around you and they're going to have to sacrifice around you and so keeping those communications open between you and your spouse is so important you know being in communication about who's doing what when where what the expectations are what things you know they need from you, what things you need from them. It's just, it's so important. If I had any advice to give for people going into this who have significant others, who have family, just try to make sure you, you make those communication boundaries, set them ahead of time and keep to them. Very important. What's the biggest misconception you had about medical school? I think my biggest misconception was that I would be able to approach it just like a, a job, that I would be able to put in my eight to nine hours, 10 hours a day, and then check out and, and, <laughs> and be done with it in the evenings. I had never gone to school and just done school. I had always worked and gone to school. So I was like, ah, this is easy. I got it. And man, that was a rude awakening, that first block that we had in anatomy. <laughs> I, I would definitely say that. What's the biggest piece of advice for the pre-med student out there who's looking at continuing their journey or, or starting back up their journey and, and looking to, to get to medical school? I would definitely say to write down your goals, write down what you want to do and when you want to do it and how you're going to accomplish those goals. Having this grand idea of I'm going to be a physician, that's great. 
that's admirable. Like, go, go do it. But you're not going to accomplish that as easily as if you were to write down those steps that you need to take. Like, okay, so I want to be a physician. I'm in my undergrad or I'm in my post back. Where am I today? Be honest about where you are today. Look where you need to be and then set out a plan. Just decide today that I'm going to do this next step that's going to move me a little closer towards that goal. When you get to that next step, take stock of where you are. Be honest with yourself. Okay, what do I need to do from here? Okay, set a next step. Okay, now you're moving a little bit closer and a little bit closer. Makes it more manageable. It keeps your eyes on where you need to be. And you're just going to you're gonna be a lot more focused, I feel, if you're going to do that than if you just kind of wing it. Any last words of encouragement for the student out there who's doubting themselves, who's questioning whether or not they should or can do this? I would say remember to believe in yourself and believe in the believe the people around you who believe in you. If you're struggling with motivation, go find a physician to shadow if you can. See what the, the end result can look like for you. Volunteer in a medical field. See the kinds of people that you're going to be treating. Use that as, as ammunition for, for your goal. Use that as motivation. It's hard to keep motivated if you don't know what you're working towards. And I think that's, that's another big thing that people can, can do to make this, this journey a little bit easier and to keep your head in the game. All right, so there you have it. Again, that was David on his journey to multiple acceptances after taking his prereqs at community college, right? Working full time in a non healthcare field, right? Not quitting his job and going and working as a scribe or going and working as a medical assistant or EMT or something, working as a developer, a program developer, computer developer, and taking his, his classes at community college and, and doing all of the shadowing and clinical experience where he could fit them in. Successful, multiple acceptances, ended up at Wake Forest, and now uh, talked about his journey a little bit there as well, and, and that transition into being a medical student. There's nothing that can prepare you for that transition. So hopefully this was a great interview for you. If you know any amazing medical students out there who would be a great guest on this podcast, reach out to me. Ryan at medicalschoolhq.net. We'll see you next time here on The Pre-Med Years. 